the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing you into the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth one more day being renewed in the praise of our lord to the glory of him under his matchless grace it is of a great privilege for us to know and to understand how true it would be to really enjoy the loving grace of christ in a useful and worthy manner rather than using it in vain men who fail to understand the simple great truth of christ our lord have really failed to know what is the love of god upon us as we know we are moving through this great apostasy of christendom men are not been recognized as men but rather this man did not have the bona fide spiritual gift of a pastor teacher have come to the great realm of the deeds and the creeds of nicolapine as it was analogous that time during the period the doctrine of balaam so is the doctrine of nicolapine today in the churches this nicolapines which have really blinded the minds of the people to know to examine whether he is a true pastor or not failing to distinguish between men and men they themselves are now heeding with their itching ears teachers of women realm and to the core the women realm which is of so much essential for us to learn this human realm have become today teachers for many of the people in the pulpits this woman realm which is reigning rampant to the core will itself show the status of the church lord god the holy spirit through the pending work of apostle paul writes to us that no woman can have authority over the man in the church to teach but since this people they have come along they have known along for their great appreciation of their own old sin nature pride of life making them to be the heads in the committee of the church causing women to preach and making it a great shame on our part to tell that there are no enough men in the congregation to handle the word of the law the word of the law demands to be given and to be taught only by a male believer who has been given this bona fide spiritual gift this true bona fide spiritual gift is not a joke and there could be no pleasure in my life if i couldn't have this true bona fide spiritual gift of teaching not real any work in my life some men are been trying to become warriors but some men have been born to become the pulling down of satan to the core and this man who have been born before the foundation of the world before being in the womb lord has chosen for him to be great warriors on this earth 
trained warriors, it is for their pleasure or hobby or to safeguard or to earn money because they are just like bodyguards to the man who needs them. But the one who has been really made to that purpose to see the end of destruction, to look and to realize what it could be to the reality of the world, to know and to understand what it could mean, the reality of truth, To know the ultimate purpose of him is to be only for this. Quoting an example, it could mean there are always differences in our lives that we can look in the automobile industry. If we take a personal four-wheeler, the registration number board will be in my country, white and black. But whereas when you take a four-wheeler for taxi, the registration number board will be yellow and black. Then and then itself we can understand that this vehicle has been purely run for the sake of business, for the sake of their work earning money. By looking at the vehicle itself we can tell it has an yellow plate number board and this yellow plate number board has been used for taxi or for any other commercial purposes. But when it comes to white and black, we know it is our personal vehicle. To tell you this example, I meant to say, being past teachers born under the influence of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, trained faithfully to handle the word of the Lord, they are being made past teachers by birth at the spiritual realm of the bona fide gift of regeneration, so that now their lives are purely dedicated for only one single dedication that is only for teaching and explaining the truth, expounding the truth, exegeting the word, isolating the word, categorizing the word, rightly dividing the word. And this is not possible if a man is really not prepared under the influence of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through a right pastor, teacher, who could, whoever could be the human mentor. In my case, it was Robert Bunker Thime, followed by some of his great teachings, which I am ever thankful to Lord that he has provided me that man. And in some people it might be some. But we need to remember, till we all could come to the unity of truth according to the knowledge of dispensations, we cannot really come under one roof. We cannot really handle the truth and taken to the further care of importance of the word of the Lord, as this taxi vehicle with a yellow number plate has been purely for that work, so will be the people who have been really made to be for pastor teachers. But today, men are not realizing what is the true bona fide gift of a pastor teacher to a male believer. Even Charles Ryer won a quote and tell in his one of his book in the Wilmington Guide saying that why can't a woman have a gift of a pastor teacher? No, she can't. When the Bible says no, it is no. Who requires your further explanation of your thoughts, of your opinions? And the Bible says absolutely to the point no woman can be a pastor to the male or to the congregation. How can you think I suppose? What you suppose, you explain that to Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. But what the word says in the original language of the scriptures, let we look upon it. Because it is not a respecter of persons, it is not your name, it is not your fame that is required in the society or in the Christian realm of this life. It is what the word tells, it is what the truth tells, it is what the witnesses of the word of the Lord we are alive over here for this earth. And further than that, we do not require anything apart from this. If the word of the Lord says yes, let it be yes. If it is no, let it be no. Any other explanation is an evil, said the Bible doctrine. But today, in today's Christian, the men love darkness rather than truth. 
That's why they say, I suppose, how much life you want to live. Now you know the great verse of 105 Psalms of 15 and 16, or 14 and 15. Do not touch my anointed ones, and do no harm to my prophets. But Lord has given us such kind of a great fortification against all the things of this earth. Whichever could mean possible of Satan to come and rise against us. When our Lord has fortified us to the truth, what all possible means, getting all the strength of this earth to fight against us, to have negative attitude against us, to have XYZ reasons against us. Any attitude, any work, anything, whatsoever it is, it cannot even touch us. Do you know why? Our Lord said in Psalms 105, 15, Do not touch my anointed ones. It cannot even come close to touch to you. When you take in the corrected translation, it says, do not have enmity or hostile. Do not your attitude be hostile towards the past teachers to whom Lord has chosen. And do not do harm for them. It meant to say, do not reject the message of the truth what is proclaiming for you. But men love to think with Satan. Even Satan thinks, I can do harm. I can do this. I can do that. I can touch my anointed ones. I can touch our Lord's anointed ones, not my. That is what referring to Satan in the sentence there. But it is to the Lord's anointed ones. No matter what it is, they cannot even come close even to touch. And the reason of integrity of it is that our Lord is a true fortification for them who are really his servants. When we are having such kind of a great protection in the word of the Lord, which indwells in us under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then what is that that is really causing us to really think that we require protection from this earth? We require security from this earth. What we require protection, what we require security from this earth, you really change bending down, bowing down to look. Your real protection, your real worth, your real honesty, your real integrity. And you change the word of the Lord to a lie. The world, by the wisdom of it, cannot know what is God. It says First Corinthians. Even in Romans it says, professing wise, they became fools. When these things are happening around, we are not able to understand that why we, the anointed ones of Christ, with the true spiritual bona fide gift of a pastor teacher to a male believer, a man being in the Dallas Theological Seminary, Charles Ryer or any other one, why they want to exchange the truth for a lie just for the sake of name or fame and to feel that they can make some money by selling their books and to change the glory of Lord to a lie, telling that why can't a woman have this bona fide gift of a pastor teacher? A woman taking care of the Sunday school because of the patients? A woman having woman fellowship? Okay, it's allowed. It may include even substantial realm of some young men. But when it comes to handle the word of the Lord, to have authority over the man, you cannot, and you will not, and you should not. These are not my words. These are the words of the Bible which tells, I say a woman to keep silence, and I have not any given authority for them to teach. And today, men love men rather than God schools of men rather than schools of Christ. Looking upon reality has been reduced to the reality of the worldly pleasure. 
And when we have such kind of a great fortification, Lord choose on us, protecting us, delivering us from all the trails and temptations and the things that are happening to be a great attack upon us through Satan, so that we could not raise our voice. When our Lord is protecting under his fortification, then what is it that really bothers us to look upon our own security by selling the word of the Lord and causing the people not to know the truth? If there are two people who are really working for truth, let it be so only for the truth. If there are four people coming for the truth, let it be only four. If they change up to be only one who are really interested for Bible doctrine, let it be only one. We don't require quantity with baseless, useless, worthless men. We require quality of men. In Apostle Acts chapter 6, we have seven men among them, one being a traitor like Judas Iscariot, who is nothing but the Nicola Pines who has really changed the true glory of the Lord into shame, which has been told in the New Testament, our Lord loved the world so much, says in Revelation 2 concerning this person, or the teachings of this man, as that our Lord hates him, because he has been a changing factor of proselyte. Among the seven, this one was a man who did not really fear God's word. So are many today in the congregation. So are many today in the churches. We could find only the six men serving the tables. And among them we know the great witnesses of Stephen, the great witnesses of Philip. When the time came, they turned out to be a great witnesses for God. So should be the congregation today, being built upon truth, a ground and pillar of truth. Men, not just being believers or ambassadors for God, they need to be uh, really ready equipment for witnessing of the truth. The apostles told to them, do you think we are here to serve tables rather than serving the true Lord? And is it not a great lesson that we need to learn from that? When they themselves came along to tell for us, they came here to really serve the truth. They really came to absolutely be an absolute witnesses for teaching to the Gentiles about the truth. They said, no, we do not have time, nor we can participate in the serving of tables. Administration work belongs to the other people of the church. Because as I was selling to the example of a taxi number plate, as well as a personal vehicle number plate, yellow and white, a taxi is for a taxi, a private vehicle is for a private vehicle. A taxi cannot be used as a private vehicle, though it's sometimes in countries. But it has a true meaning and definition only for the work of taxi, taxi, taxi. And they have the taxes as well, differently as lifetime tax, what they can pay to the personal vehicles. So apostles were telling to them in Acts chapter 6, we are not here to serve tables. Do you think we need to forbid teaching the word of the Lord and come to serve the tables? Anytime and anywhere in our life, we need to come back and look upon the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is our only benchmark, where we can rely on our sources, where we can understand the truth where we can depend upon doctrine, not the human viewpoint of rationalism and empiricism. We need to look what the truth says. We need to consider only the mind of God, which has been God-breathed, Theonistos, not men, how much they can understand, divide the congregation, make some denominations, and go and look upon their worship centers, and think that they're doing great work to God, which is no way possible to be done. Dear brother, life is very, very, very much responsible because time is too short. Every breath we take is responsible to the glory of God. And we ought to answer by God in the delight of the fear, what we can have, the true delight for us only in the fear of God. 
Man really don't love the truth. Man really want which is not at all true. And it is of a very great pain for us to note as we look upon, consider upon, think upon where and how the Christendom has to be, it is not. Where the people in the time of Book of Revelation of this historical trends of chapters 1, 2 and 3, we note, they checked out whether they're true Jews or not. Because the true Jews, if it would have been, they would have been really made a synagogue of God, but since they were not true Jews, professing themselves to be Jews, they made the Church of God as a synagogue of Satan. Why our Lord was telling to them, the house which we have been going to pray should be a house of prayer. And that's what we have only the information there by our Lord. But when we come back to Isaiah 56, 6 and 7 and 8, we have the remaining verses as well. My house will be called as a house of prayer, where they need to come and give the sacrifices to God. And that sacrifices to God, as per 1 Peter 2, 5 through 9, refers to the spiritual sacrifices in Christ. Because the first half of the church is a ground and pillar of truth. The second half of the church, why this church has been formed, why the ecclesia has been called out, is that we need to give the spiritual sacrifices to our Lord. And that's why that house has been called as a house of a prayer, where constant meditations about Bible doctrine has to be taught. It is a classroom where the people will come and learn doctrine. And in order to compare that in Ephesians 3, Twice telling through the church, through the church. The first reason he tells for us in Ephesians 3, 8 and 9. Church being university. Pastor teacher being the dean. Believers who are hearers are nothing but the professors to the angels. So that this man, the much variegated wisdom of God which they learn from the church should teach to them. And in concluding Ephesians 3, 18 and 19 our Lord says. Through the church, the glory be to God. That's why our Lord said, My house has been called as a house of prayers. My house has been called as a reality of truth. But men don't love it. Men don't like it. Today, how are the churches? They are nonetheless but a social clubs, night clubs, bouquet dances. Why? No fear of Lord, no truth, no particular order of worship, gibberishly jumping around, dancing around in the blasphemy of their tongues, blaspheming my Christ, with their vocal cords being controlled by Satan, by the Engashna Mutas demon. And they say we are really praising God by speaking in tongues, which are no tongues at all. Why is this great fall down in the churches today? Why is it men are not able to understand what is the truth in Christ? Because men have not realized what to be a man. Pastor teachers are not really pastor teachers. That's why they entertain about women. Women pastor teachers in the churches. That's why our Lord stands written for us in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Revelation 2, 8 and 9. Not Ephesians. The one who overcomes by listening to this doctrine will find an access for the same tree of life which has been restricted when Adam and Eve ate the fruit. So that they could know really the true knowledge. The true knowledge is nothing but to overthrow the Nicolaitan deeds and stay back in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, to stay back in the truth. But as long as you fail to know if they were really true Judeans or not, so long you will really fail to know the reality of the world. Dear brethren, life is too short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too big, too large. We cannot really waste our life in useless and worthless speculations. We need to know the truth. We need to learn the truth. We need to understand the truth. And our only boundary will be Bible doctrine, the word of the Lord, the mind of Christ. Not what men think, not what men follow. Not what men think, not what men follow. Not how much congregation has been really taken to that care, how many people are following in, how many people are getting in. 
Our only boundary is Bible doctrine, what the Bible is telling and what where we are standing and what are we following. And the Bible says, yes, it has to be yes, it is. When it says no, it has to be no. Any other explanation, any other reasoning of the people following them, do not follow the men, follow the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is our only ultima. The word of the Lord is our only truth. The word of the Lord is our only process of realizing what it could be in Christ. And if it is not, then you need to know what it is. And you need to understand what it could be better for us to know the truth. Dear brethren, life is too short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. We cannot waste our life thinking our own stupefied reasons. But rather we need to think what it could be in really fulfilling the word of the Lord. So dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order of well telling to Lord God the Father that we believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us, for very simple believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the great matter is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest malady is to carry so from Lagan, herald the word in season out of season because of the diamond from my witnesses by which you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in dwelling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And the number two diamond from my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, do not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. If the men do not recognize, if the men do not know, if the men do not listen, it is their fate. We are not. Our duty is to proclaim, our duty is to record and keep, our duty is to show forth and put, so that our Lord knows how to use it, where to use it, and when to use it. And apart from this, we don't have anything else on this earth to be done. Our work is to teach, to teach, and to teach the word of the Lord. So dear brother, and think over these issues, not worry about the softies, but rather standing forth for the word of the Lord. So which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou was going to our fellowship with you through thy word. What else can we ask? What else can we witness? What else can we tell? Then to be true witnesses for thy truth. Strengthen us so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. Much of this world is been into the realm, as you know very well, before a word is upon our tongue. Let thy soul, let thou be rushed in our soul, so that, Lord, as you have sent us over here on this earth to do your work, help us to do it perfectly, and you could find rest and peace in our lives. As it is a time that the day has been spending out and the night is coming near, we know how much we are grieving and squelching and lying to the ministry of God, get the Holy Spirit. Help us not to be those men. But rather, Lord, you could find a resting place in us, a sure dwelling place in us. As we've already been dwelling in us, make it to be more comfortable for thee. So that thy realm of thinking could be absolutely in rest. What else can we tell, Lord? Through our lives, let you be having the peace. Through our lives of treating, let you can enjoy the true fellowship with us. Through our lives, Lord, let you be delighted in us. If there are ten children out of those ten leapers whom I have sent, only one came back. Let me be that one to thank thee and we praise thee. And you could be honored by the of us. To this extent, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit will challenge us and bless us. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.